Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be uh, kind of going through chromosomes and meiosis. Uh, we're going to start by looking at some information that is a little bit of review and then we're going to be moving into some information that is new. As you kind of go through this video you're going to notice the handout you've received has some information that needs to be filled in. Make sure that you're paying attention between the video and the handout that you have and that you're filling in that information as you go through it as it will help you with some assignments that we have coming up uh, at the end along with questions that will pop up as this video plays. This image shows us chromosomes. We already know that chromosomes are made up of compacted DNA. So when we pack together DNA we form these chromosomes. Uh, one duplicated chromosome which we see here contains two chromatids and each of these chromatids will be identical to one another They'll have the same genes and they'll have the same variation of each trait. So if this has green eyes here, then this gene over here is also going to have green eyes. Um, do note that our chromatids, they attach to one another at the centromere. And then at the ends of each chromatid, there are the telomeres. Once again, the telomeres, um, they're shortened with each round of cell division and they serve ultimately to protect the genes contained within the inner regions of each chromatid um, so that those are not mutated through the replication process. Here we, again we see a karyotype. Um, we talked about these just a short while ago. They show us all of the chromosomes in each cell of an organism um, and this karyotype would be found in every cell. Um, we do see the chromosomes are homologous, meaning that they paired up. Homologous means that we got one chromosome number one from mom, we got one chromosome number one from dad, we got one chromosome number nine from mom, and we got one chromosome number nine from dad. They are homologous. Again, uh, the dark lines and the light lines, the bands, they do uh, kind of match up. So if there's a dark band on this one, there's going to be a dark band on the homolog. These indicate the location of genes, and recall that genes are sections of DNA that will um, code for one of our features, one of our traits. Um, pre the example I just used a short while ago is we have genes that control eye color, but we also have genes that control height, genes that control how quickly we can digest food, genes that determine if we're lactose intolerant. Um, so we have genes that control everything about us. Of uh, all the chromosomes in our body, we do have a total of 23 pairs or 46 total individual chromosomes. The first 22 pairs are autosomes and these would be things that are found in all um, individuals within the population. Uh, so we're talking both males and females. Sex chromosomes, they're found only in gender specific individuals. XY, this one happens to be a male, females would be XX. So let's take a look at um, another karyotype. Once again, here we see one that shows us the chromosomes after they have gone through the S phase of the cell cycle. Um, so now they kind of take on that characteristic X shape because this chromatid has made a copy of itself and there's its copy. And this homolog to this one, this chromatid had made a copy of itself and there's its, its partner chromatid. So our homologous chromosomes now have this X shape. Again, we see that this one happens to be a male. We can, uh, as we identified with the Henrietta Lacks, um, she had many, many copies of each of these chromosomes. Uh, here we see an example where there's an extra copy of the 21st chromosome. Uh, again, this disorder happens to be Down syndrome. Uh, Henrietta Lacks had multiple copies of every single one of these brings us to some new information. Um, we ultimately have two different types of cells within our body. They are somatic cells and gametes. Somatic cells, these would be cells found in the liver or the spleen or your heart or lungs or in your skin. Um, these are body cells. We use them on an every single day basis, on every moment of our life basis. Gametes, on the other hand, they're only used for reproduction. So um, there's two types of gametes. It depends on gender. Uh, they would either be sperm if you're male, egg if you're female. 
Um, so they are used explicitly for sexual reproduction and they originate as cells known as germ cells. So germ cells um, become gametes and then the gamete is either sperm or egg depending on gender. Now thinking about these, somatic cells, they are present from birth till death. Gametes on the other hand, they're only produced during a specific window of a person's lifetime and that's when they're able to um, have, have children. So children do not have gametes because they're too young, they have not reached um, puberty yet and sometimes adults they they reach a point in their life when they are unable to have children as well uh, specifically the moment in life when females no, mo no longer have gametes that would be called menopause and um, for males when they no longer have gametes that would be called virility looking at somatic cells further we can see that they're found in many different organs as i mentioned and somatic cells have a total of 46 chromosomes. They have 46 chromosomes, 23 from each parent, and of those 46, 22 pairs or 44 are autosomes, and two would be the sex chromosomes and determine gender um, and uh, other features characteristic of non-males or females. All somatic cells are replaced by mitosis. So we talked about how they go through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and the result is two daughter cells that are identical to the original cell. Gametes, they are a little bit different. Gametes, we talked about uh, the sex cells, they're either called sperm or egg, only used for sexual reproduction. These ones only have 23 total chromosomes. There are no pairs of chromosomes. In essence, a cell does not have its homologous partner with them. Recall homologous chromosomes means you have matching chromosomes and one came from each parent. So out of these 23, 22 are autosomes and one is a sex chromosome. So how do gametes form? They only have half of the total number of chromosomes that our somatic cells have. Recall somatic cells, they have 46 chromosomes and we got 23 from each parent. Sperm and egg, however, they only have 23 total chromosomes, which makes sense because we know that half of our DNA comes from mom and half comes from dad. So whenever a sperm fertilizes an egg, which is kind of what we see going on here, we're essentially having a fuse happen or a fusion between the egg and the sperm. These two cells combine and they form one cell. So when we take 23 from the sperm, plus 23 from the egg, that gives us 46 total chromosomes. We now have one cell with the total number of chromosomes that an individual would have. Going back to our karyotype here with Down syndrome, we see that this one has 23 pairs, so this individual has a total of 47 chromosomes, not 46. How did that happen? one of the two parents, either the mom or the dad, donated two copies of chromosome number 21 and the other parent donated its single chromosome as it should. So we definitely want to make sure when gametes form that they only have 23 chromosomes because when they don't, bad things happen. Continuing with how gametes form, um, we know that gametes are sperm and eggs, so where are these produced in our bodies? For females, eggs are produced in the um, ovaries, and for the sperm, sperm are produced in the testes or the testicles. So we have the locations of where these are um, formed, and uh, we haven't quite gotten to the process of how they are formed, because there's a little bit of information that we need to cover before we get to that. We know that um, our somatic cells have homologous pairs. So if we got this one from mom, we have a matching one, exact same chromosome from dad, so on and so forth. Any cell in our body, namely our somatic cells, that has one copy of a chromosome from each parent, for all chromosomes, those cells are said to be diploid. The prefix di means two. N, in this case, that refers to the number of chromosomes you would get from one parent. So 
we would get 23 chromosomes from one parent, but we have two parents. 2 times 23 would give us 46 total chromosomes in a diploid cell in our body. We now know that sperm and egg cannot have two sets of chromosomes going to their children. We have to take a diploid cell and reduce it by half in order to form a gamete. Since it is reduced by half and 46 goes into 23, these cells, sperm and egg, are said to be haploid. They have half of the total number of chromosomes that normal cells would have and in this case would still represent the number 23. So we have n, half of the total number of chromosomes, uh, diploid 2n would be uh, the total number of chromosomes and two sets of them. So the formation of these haploid cells, our sex cells, it happens through a process called meiosis. It's very similar to what we looked at with mitosis, but it is distinctly different. Um, mitosis happens only in somatic cells. Meiosis only happens in reproductive cells contained within the testes or the ovaries. So let's compare these two processes, mitosis and meiosis. We know that mitosis looks like this, and we form two cells original uh, that are exactly the same as one another, and they would be exactly the same as the original cell. Keep in mind that this cell is beyond the S phase, where it has made a copy of each of these chromosomes. So one green, one red, one purple, and one of these aqua ones should be what we see in each of these, and we do. So it produces genetically identical cells, and the result is diploid. We have um, matching homologs. This purple one and this green one would be homologous. They're the same chromosome. Maybe they're chromosome number 10. We got one chromosome 10 for mom. We got a matching one from dad. Recall going back to karyotypes that homologous chromosomes are about the same size. So we do see that the purple and the green are about the same size and the red and the aqua are about the same size to indicate that they're homologs. This process, mitosis, it takes place throughout an organism's entire life and it's involved in asexual reproduction. So cells are reproduced, but no sex has occurred. Meiosis, on the other hand, it's a little bit different. These cells are identical, but down here, every single one of those cells, if you look at them, they are in fact different. All of these cells produced are haploid. We notice a green chromosome here. Where is its purple homolog? It's in an entirely different cell. Same thing with this one. Where is its purple homolog? It's not in that same cell. This, as mentioned, it only happens during specific moments in the person's life, and that is when they are physically capable of reproducing, having a child. And these cells are only used in sexual reproduction. So their sole purpose is to reproduce, to form children. So haploid cells, diploid cells, meiosis, and mitosis.